All right, so welcome everyone. Um, we're joined by our men's basketball head coach, Shaheen Holloway, women's basketball coach, uh, Mark Mitchell, and athletic director, Rochelle Paul. Um, people are still trickling in, but we are gonna hop right into it um, with questions for Coach Holloway, um, who's gonna answer the questions that have been submitted already. Um, thank you to everyone who did submit questions um, in the response form. Um, so Coach Holloway, um, if you're ready, we're just going to hop right into it. Yep, let's go. Um, okay, so question that someone submitted. Uh, we obviously knew after last season that Casey Nadefo was a defensive force. Um, this season, he's proven to be an offensive force, uh, especially as of late. How much does he mean to the team, not only as a player, but he's a junior, so as a leader as well? Uh, you know, Casey um, means a lot to the team. Casey played a lot of hard work into his, his uh, offense this year. Um, I can't say during the preseason because we, we didn't have one this summer. But, you know, doing, doing practice, you know, staying a little bit after practice to try to get some work in. Um, as far as a leader, you know, him being the second oldest on the team, we got Taraji, who's a fifth-year senior, and, and Casey's a junior. You know, it's a lot, it's a lot put on him, especially by me, because he's been with me the longest. He's been with me for three years. Um, he's, he's been really good for us this year on and off the court. Um, his leadership still got a lot better. Um, you know, guys follow behind him and he's taking that responsibility. So he, he means a lot to us. Um, with the prospect of playing three games on three straight nights, uh, the need for depth will be magnified. Do you see Omar and Babakar possibly playing a larger role than they have been during the regular season? You know, when it's, when, when it's tournament time, you know, Everything's out there. You know, we, we, we need everybody. We, we need all 11 guys, you know, to come down here and try to win a championship. Um, yeah, so, yeah, everything's fine. I thought Omar gave us great minutes the last game against Quinnipiac. I thought he came in and, and played great for us, and that was good for him and good for his confidence. He's finally starting to get healthy. He's been hurt all year with a, a, a ankle injury. So he's starting to get healthy a little bit. He's, I, I think he's about 85% right now. And as far as Babaka, you know, it's tough for a kid coming in at the mid at the mid at the midpoint, you know, try to get with us, especially learning our defensive schemes and, and offense stuff. But he did a great, he's doing a great job of just trying to fit in. And yeah, and, and we're going to need him as well. You're going to be playing a team, uh, either Canisius or Ryder, who play tomorrow. How do you then turn around and prepare for a team that, A, Canisius you haven't seen since early January, and then Ryder you saw just last weekend. So, you know, what type of preparation goes into that? Like you said, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, we practice today. We're going to practice tomorrow. It's hard. It's hard. To, it's hard to prepare because you don't know who you're playing. <laughs> so you know, you just you just got to worry about you right now. Uh, you know, we we got to try work on our offense a little bit. That's what we've been doing the last couple of days, trying to get that better. But you know, we just got to be ready for whoever we play. Both teams is really good teams, very well coached. Um, obviously, Kanisha's beat us twice this year, and Ryder's beat us once. Um, so we know we, whoever we play, we got to be prepared and have our A game. What, um, for your team, are the top three areas that you're putting the most focus on for uh, the postseason? I couldn't hear you. Your phone was breaking up. Right now. Sorry. Oops, sorry about that. Um, what are the top three areas that your team is focusing on for the postseason? Uh, I think one, we kind of focusing on, on, on us. Um, I don't think we've been playing that well as of late. I think guys are wore down a little bit, you know, just trying to keep guys fresh. Um, that's why the last couple of days we kind of gave them off. Um, so I think one, to just worry about us. Two, we got to find our offense again. Um, our offense haven't been the same since we um, had that, that pause. And three, we just got to, you know, continue, continue keep doing what we're doing on defense. Our defense is the reason why we've still been in all these games. You know, the, the, these kids are still playing hard and paying attention to detail. Now we just got to try to put all three together. Um, so you're heading down to Atlantic City tonight. You then don't play until Thursday night. How do you keep your team focused and, you know, kind of like busy until then? That's a great question. Great, great question. Wish I had an answer for you. Um, I don't know. You know, we got to, you know, we got to get up in the morning and test, um, come back to the hotel, probably watch some film. Get, get, get guys some lunch, go to practice, come back, watch some more film, you know, get guys dinner. I mean, that's going to be a thing, you know, 
hope you don't spend too much time in the room with just eating and stuff like that because we don't want to get, get the guys to spoil you with that. But um, it's not much you could do, Anna. You know, you could, you could watch film. Um, you really don't want to take kids out right now, especially down there because it's so open. You just got to try to keep everybody together and make sure everybody understands why we're down there. It's, it's a business trip. You know, we'd be kind of playing for a championship. You have a pretty big group of sophomores on your team. Um, what or who, excuse me, have you seen um, the most improvement from last year to this year? And what has that meant for your team to have that core group of sophomores? Uh, having this sophomore class has been really good for us. You know, just having five guys that understand me and what I want to do. Um, I, I would say Matt Lee. I think Matt Lee took the, the biggest jump. You know, he's, he's playing a lot of minutes this year. Last year, he obviously split minutes with Aaron and Cam. This year, he's pretty much playing, you know, a lot of minutes. Um, he's kind of like the hardest of our team. He's one, of, he's one of the toughest kids we have on the team. Um, you know, he uh, – on, on defense, everything starts with him. On offense, everything starts with him. You know, I put a lot of pressure on Matt because I was a point guard. I understand the position and what it means to the team. So I, th I think Matt did an unbelievable job this year of running our team and kind of, you know, getting us in the position that we are right, right now. So I would say Matt Lee. I took a, has took the biggest jump, but I think Daryl Banks, um, far as offensively, has been solid for us all year. Um, Hassan Drummond took a big jump as well. Waiting for Doug and, and, and Fusini, you know, to, to come back around. You know, they kind of been, obviously Doug foot, having his foot injury really messed him up, and Fusini, he been having big time knee problems. So, you know, just waiting for those two guys you know, to, to get back 100%, because when those guys are 100%, we are a different team. Coach, you were fortunate enough to play almost an entire conference schedule. You played 18 games. You also were able to um, fit in some non-conference games earlier in the season. How does that play um, to your ad advantage or even a disadvantage this week? Well, I wish we could have played all 20 games. You know, that we probably, you know, probably had had a chance to, to do some different things. Um, and the, the, the non-conference was great for us. Um, gave guys a chance to play on a different, you know, play against different talent, um, a bigger stage, a bigger audience, playing St. John's, playing the South, playing the University of Maryland, playing Stony Brook and playing St. Francis. You know, those games, guys ready for the conference. I thought, uh, you know, I thought the guys were tremendous. And, uh, and you got to realize, like, our first game before St. John's, we only had, like, eight to ten practices. And guys came out truly, truly you know, play way better than I expected. Um, and it's kind of been like that all year. But uh, I thought the non-conference really um, was helpful for us. And to be honest with you, Anna, I'm just blessed and the team is blessed that we have an opportunity to play. You know, we don't take it for granted. You know, every game, before every game, I, you know, I told the guys in the locker room, you know, we got to thank the, the, the big man upstairs for letting us be here today, playing this wonderful game that we all love and, and love to play and love to coach, especially with everything that's going on. So... Um, we were just happy to be part of this, to tell you the truth. Great. Um, so the MAC last week announced that there will be limited fans in attendance at the tournament. Um, just what are your thoughts on that, and how do you think that that can benefit your team? <laughs> um, well, I'm on record for saying I'm against it. And it's not because of the fans. I'm just against it. Obviously, I love having the fans. You know, I think having a good fan base is always great. I'm just against it because, you know, we haven't had it all year, and I just don't want any distractions. I don't want guys, you know, worry about their family or friends in the stands and, you know, try to sneak out the hotel or try to, you know, f family members come to the lobby. You know, like I said before, it's really hard for me to tell a mother or father that they can't see their son that they haven't seen in seven months, eight months. You know, and now you're able to come to a game, and it's – it's so easy to want that for that player or that mother or father to want to hug their, their kid. So I think it's a, I think it's a distraction to be honest. So not a, I'm not a big fan of it personally. Well, thank you, Coach. Those are all the questions that um, we have for you. We really appreciate you taking the time to hop on um, tonight to talk. I know you're getting ready to get on the bus to Atlantic City, so you know have a safe trip down there and good luck on Thursday. We're all rooting on the Peacocks and looking forward to a really exciting tournament. Thank you, and I appreciate it. And to everybody out there that's supporting us, not just men's basketball, but, but women's basketball as well. Um, you know, for them, you know, just take a time, a second, let me take a second to, you know,
praise, you know, Mark Mitchell and his staff for an unbelievable year that they had with the women's basketball. I mean, they, you know, those girls played their hearts out for him, and um, he did a great job of coaching them as well. So, you know, I'm just grateful to have, you know, this this, this platform tonight to tell everybody, you know, we look forward to going, going down there and competing, trying to come back with a championship for everybody. So, you know, I'll tune in and be cheering the Peacocks on. Thank you, Shaw. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. Great. So now we're uh, joined by head coach Mark Mitchell. Um, Mark, if it's cool with you, we're just going to hop right into questions. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Um, so the rookie, Asia James, um, has just been tearing it up. Recently was named MAC Player of the Week, uh, MAC Rookie of the Week, MET. Uh, honorable mention, are you at all surprised by the year that she's been having um, as a freshman? Uh, actually, not at all. Um, uh, I know, you know, I know what we were getting in, in Asia James. Uh, I knew it was going to be a learning curve for her coming from high school. Um, uh, th this, the game, you know, you know, at this level is a, a lot faster. Uh, and the young ladies at this level are, you know, smarter and, and, and stronger than what she's been playing against in high school. So I knew it was going to be a learning curve, but I thought somewhere around the mid mid year uh, she would really pick it up, and and uh, and, I, and I expected her to have this kind of year. Coach, at the end of last season, you specifically made a comment about how this year your team was going to come and out rebound everybody, and it seems like they have just been grabbing those boards left and right. Um, speak a little bit about Sky Castro again, Asia James, and just what they bring, you know, in height to the team and defense. Yeah, well, like when I made that comment, I knew we, we were getting Sky Castro and Asia James uh, to come in, um, and I know what kind of uh, uh, you know players they are on the on the glass. Um, they really you know anticipate well, go hard after it. They have great size, they have great athleticism, um, and and their anticipation and will to uh, to go get you know clean up glass for us. Uh, you know, it's something I knew that we, we, we were going to uh, be blessed with this year. And I'm just really fortunate that, you know, two young ladies uh, believe in me and believe in our, you know, our, 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 our mission uh, and, and want to be a part of the uh, Peacock uh, program. Coach, on Friday, you guys uh, defeated number one Marist 58-51 uh, to close out the season, lock in the number three seed. Um, how do you harness that positive momentum heading into the tournament and kind of try to prevent, you know, maybe a hangover game after such a exciting win? Yeah, I think, I think the, uh, the level of maturity, uh, on our team, uh, has gotten much better, uh, throughout this season. Um, uh, we have great leadership with, uh, Ty Thornton and, and, and Kendrea Williams, um, and, and then have to bring along, uh, a bunch of the, you know, the, the new guys that are on the team. I mean, we, we brought in nine new, nine new players. So um, just for us to grow from that, from that game and understanding, uh, yes, um, it was a great, um, great win for the team, great, great win for the, for the program, uh, but understanding what the mission was from, from day one, what, what was our mission? Our, our mission is to uh, win the, the MAC Conference Championship um, and, and our growth throughout the year. Uh, I think, you know, all the young ladies have their heads on straight and, and we're here for a mission. We understand this is business. Uh, this isn't about play, play time. This is, this is about taking care of our business. You mentioned uh, Ty Thornton and Kendra Williams. Now that you're in the tournament, how much more do you lean on your veterans, um, you know, in preparation, you know, come game time, you know, that they have that veteran experience for such a young team? How much do you lean on them? Uh, it's, you know, tremendously. I mean, I've been leaning on them uh, all season long, um, putting extra extra work on them, extra pressure on them, uh, only because I believe they can handle it, and I know they can. Um, uh, this time of year, uh, it's March. Uh, it, it's, it's now it's, it's now you, you win or you go home. Uh, so these young ladies have been through the wars. They understand what, this, what, what it's like, uh, and they, they've done a tremendous job of uh, – of guiding these young people, uh, particularly down the stretch here, and understanding um, each moment is, you know, could be our last. So, so uh, I'm really happy that we have them. 
You're playing an Iona team that you swept in the very first weekend of the MAC season. How do you prepare um, for this team that you haven't seen since, you know, back in December? They're a different team. You're a different team. You know, how do you prepare for that? It's, it's a clean slate. Um, uh, the, the December 12th and 13th games, uh, we throw them out the window. You know, I'm, I'm not even going to look at that film. It, it, it's, it, it's three months ago. Uh, so it's 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 a completely different slate now, a clean slate. Um, they have some new players on their roster, uh, mid, mid mid year transfers uh, that are playing, and, and you know Ketsia Atheist is a is a monster. Uh, so you know we're just going to look at the last five games that they played and dissect it that way, and uh, go into a mindset like you know we we understand that this is do or die. Coach, I'll ask you the same question that um, I asked Coach Holloway. You were also fortunate enough to play almost an entire conference schedule, 19 games, um, with some non-conference games uh, sprinkled in there in the beginning. You know, how does that play to your advantage heading into the tournament? Well, we're just – we were fortunate to play any games this year, and, and, and that was our mindset uh, going into each game, each series. Uh, we were just very happy that we can actually lace them up and, and, and get out there and compete. Um Playing those non-conference games were vital for us because, again, we had a brand new team, uh, so many different faces. We didn't have a summer program, which we desperately needed um, with all the new faces in, particularly six freshmen coming in. Uh, and, and we were so, in, you know, we're so inexperienced. And uh, so, so those those conf- those non-conference games were very important. Uh, I'm just happy that you know we we stayed COVID free and we were able to play some, you know, you know particularly, you know, all of our, uh, our, all of our conference games. So we're just really fortunate and happy that we were able to do so. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be helpful because we needed, we needed those, that, those experiences, those tough losses that we had uh, throughout the season. Uh, it's it's going to be very helpful for us uh, through this tournament. Awesome. Um, what are the major differences preparing, um, you know, for a regular season game versus a tournament game uh, for your, for you and your coaching staff and your team? Well, well, regular season games are, I, I, I view it as a preseason for me. I, I, everything for me is, 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 is postseason. I want to get to postseason. I want to win championships. Uh, so we use those experiences for learning. Um, yes, we want to win those games, obviously. Uh, uh, but we, we use those for, for learning experiences. Now, when it comes to postseason, we, we reflect on uh, what we've done throughout the season, um, uh, very, very hard on the players uh, throughout the season. And, and this, is the, this is the time that you, you kind of, I don't want to say slack off, but you, uh, you kind of loosen the reins a little bit and, and put some ownership on the players and, and, and give them a little bit more freedom th- throughout that uh, postseason. And we just tighten up some things, uh, 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 you know, throughout, throughout you know, our, our, our system uh, and, we just go out there and, uh, you know, lay it out on the line. Now, Coach, you're already in Atlantic City. You guys arrived earlier today. Um, same as the men's team, you're not playing until Thursday. How do you keep your team focused and, you know, busy, out of trouble, all that stuff uh, until Thursday? You threaten them. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, we're, we, we uh, you know, my assistant coach, Coach Keanu Porter, uh, uh, has laid out an itinerary for us. Uh, for the entire week, um, uh, you know, young ladies still have classes they got to take care of, uh, academics uh, they have to take care of as well. Uh, so, you know, we're going to go tests, uh, we have practice, uh, we have uh, scheduled lunchtime, scheduled dinner time. everything is scheduled. Uh, so we're going to stay on point that way. Yes, we are going to keep them in, in, indoors. Uh, uh, we're fortunate to have a, uh, in the hotel, we have an entire floor to ourselves. So I don't know, maybe we'll play some hide and seek or something like that to loosen things up. Uh, but uh, we are here to focus um, uh, on the task. Uh, the task at hand is to win this uh, MAC championship, and which I think that we have a, a legitimate shot of doing. Uh, if we can just stay loose and stay focused and, you know, understand why, why we're here. Um, again, the MAC uh, announced last week that there will be limited fan attendance. Um, again, how does that benefit your team? Um, you know, maybe having their parents in the stands or just any fans in general. Well, 
much much like Coach Coach Holloway, um, you know, for for me, I, I I look at it like we haven't had fans all season. Um, you know, at the beginning of the season, I had a conversation with my players and asked them, "What do you want? How how bad do you want this?" Um, and, and and everybody agreed that this is what they want. So we made so many sacrifices. Um, young ladies weren't able to go home for Thanksgiving. Uh, the young ladies didn't see their families on Christmas. Uh, so we made all of those uh, sacrifices uh, just to get to this point. And now we're here and we have, we have fans. We, we're allowed to have fans. Um, uh, much like Coach Holloway, I feel like it's a, it's a bit of a distraction at this point of the season because you have people concerned about who's coming to the game as opposed to the game. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So – uh, I, I'm all about fans. I love, I love the families, uh, you know, all of, all of our players and their, the families, you know, I, I just spoke to Kendra's dad today and he's like, come on coach. You know, we, we go back since, you know, 2010. I, I'm like, yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but you know, we, we, we can't sit down and break bread with you. Um, I know you want to hug your daughter, you know what I mean? Things like that. Um, and it's hard. It's, it's very, very difficult. Um, but there's a task at hand. Um, let's let's achieve our goal, uh, and then uh, and then hugs for everybody. Coach, you have um, I know we mentioned your veterans, Ty and Kendra. You have a good group of rookies as well. Yeah, we sm we spoke about Sky Castro, Aza James. You also have Rachel Cool, Victoria Ignacio, um, Bintis allows in her first year with the team. Um, mm -hmm. Since uh, your first game in November to now, who have you've seen that has had the most growth um, on the court? Um, and, you know, how does that play to your benefit uh, heading into the tournament? Uh, I, I would say uh, a lot of our players have taken steps forward. Um, uh, I think Sky Castro has, uh, has really shown the most growth um, from, from the beginning with the raw talent that she has. Um, uh, her level of maturity has, uh, has risen. Um, she was a, a bit immature day one, uh, as opposed to today, um, much more, uh, engaged, uh, and, 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 and she's a really coachable kid. Um, once you, once you get to know her, like you gotta get to know her and she's gotta get to know you, but she's really shown growth, uh, been to Salau coming from a, a junior college atmosphere. Um, and understanding that, you know, I mean, she was a junior college All-American. She, you know, averaged 20 points a game, and you don't have to do that at this level in, in playing with the players that, that, that's surrounding you. So she's shown growth throughout the year as well. Um, um, I got I, I got to tell you about uh, Victoria Iconacio. I know she doesn't play a lot of minutes. Uh, uh, she's not a big stat stuffer right now, but – um, a kid like that and her attitude, um, she didn't play a minute in our last game against Marist, but you go back and watch the video and you see who's the loudest one on the bench screaming and, and cheering on their teammates. That's the culture that we have here. Uh, that's the culture that I want to have. It's the team first and, 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 and everything else the second. So, um, so Victoria has shown a tremendous amount of growth as well. Awesome. Well, coach, those are all the questions that we have for you. Um, again, really appreciate you taking the time to hop on and uh, speak to our fans and alumni. Um, you know, best of luck this week, uh, 12 o'clock on Thursday, ESPN plus the women play Iona. Um, coach, we're so excited to watch them play and best of luck. Stay safe this week. Thank you, everyone. And please uh, come out, you know, watch ESPN plus support us. Um, Thank you, you know, Rachel, for all your support. Thank you, Anna, for all you, what you do for us. Uh, we really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Take care. And then uh, to end the night, uh, I know we're joined by Athletic Director Rochelle Paul. Um, Rochelle, there was a question in here for you um, for, that a fan submitted earlier. Just kind of, if you can talk a little bit, um, you know, being – on the sidelines of this basketball season and seeing, um, you know, just the, the sacrifices and just, you know, everything that our teams and staff and coaches have uh, 
gone through this season. Just speak a little bit about that and what that means, you know, to St. Peter's um, as a whole, you know, have these, uh, you know, these student athletes and coaches representing us in such a positive way uh, through these really unprecedented times. Yeah, I have to, I have to give a tremendous shout out to the coaches and the student athletes and the staff um, and everyone really that had a part in this season, um, specifically at St. Peter's, you know, it, we always talk about how St. Peter's is just, it's grit. We use that word grit a lot. And that's, that's the word that I would use to describe um, our student athletes and our coaches and staff to get through this season. There were obviously multiple, multiple um, adversities. There were, I don't know how many scheduling changes across the board in the league. Um, we were playing off campus. Uh, we didn't have a gym that our kids could just go to and, and shoot if they wanted to shoot or, you know, have individuals if they wanted to have individuals with the coaches. I mean, that, those sorts of things uh, weren't available to our student athletes this year, which puts them at a disadvantage, quite frankly. Um, but they were resilient. Um, you know, I, I give a shout out to our, our neighbors, um, NJCU, who graciously uh, partnered with us to use their facility. Um, and they were tremendously flexible with all of our scheduling changes. Um, with all of our scheduling changes, I have to say there wasn't one weekend where we had to tell either our men's basketball team or our women's basketball team, unfortunately, we can't make this work. We don't have a gym to play in. Um, you know, there were times when the coaches were flexible. Coach Mitchell went up to Iona one weekend when really Iona was supposed to come to um, St. Peter's, but they were available. We were available um, and they and Coach Mitch agreed to go up and play them. So there are many number of things that our student athletes, Coach Mitchell also mentioned, you know, they didn't get to go home for Thanksgiving. They didn't see their families for Christmas. That's, that's really hard, um, specifically on some, some college students that are away at college for the very first time. Um, you know, they've been practicing basketball since they arrived on campus in August. So the many number of things that our student athletes and coaches sacrificed this season is just incredible. And I give them so much credit. And again, I use that word grit because that's the word I would use to describe um, getting through this season. And I have nothing but confidence uh, that we're gonna do well in the SMAC championship this week. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you to everybody for joining us. Um, again, Thursday is the day to circle on your calendar. The women play Iona at 12 p.m. on ESPN Plus. The men um, are right around, or excuse me, right after that at 5 p.m. They'll be playing of the winner, excuse me, the winner of either um, Kanisha's or Ryder who play tomorrow. Um, that's at 5 p.m. also on ESPN Plus. So clear your calendar for Thursday. You have a lot of Peacock basketball to watch. Um, thank you to everybody who's been watching all season. Um, like Rochelle said, like our coaches said, it's been a season unlike any other and to have your continued support um, for our student athletes has just been uh, so incredible. Thank you to everybody who purchased season tickets as well. Um, that goes a long way uh, in supporting our programs as well. Um, so again, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Um, we will see you Thursday and go Peacocks. Thanks everyone.